Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to look at a project that is for quite some time on my to-do list and I just want to figure out what it is. The ROM OS project. This project promises you that you can load an OS from a 64 kilobyte or even smaller EEPROM chip. You do not need any drive on your system and you will boot into a FreeDOS command prompt. And all you need to do is to download a binary file and burn it to one of your EEPROM chips. This EEPROM chip then has to go on an ISA network card into the boot ROM socket. And then with a little bit of configuration, you're supposed to be able to boot into ROM OS. So for the simplicity of this video and just trying to figure out if it works, I downloaded one of these pre-built binary files and I specifically picked this one the ROM OS PCI bin, because we do need to configure it under DOS, but I will configure it for ISA because I only have an ISA motherboard. So most likely we could have just used the ROM OS bin and burn it directly on an EEPROM chip and use it straight away. But yeah, I just added this little extra step in between just so you can see how this looks like. And the other thing that we have to keep in mind is that this EEPROM needs to appear at memory location D000. This is a 64 kilobyte extension, so it uses four blocks of 16 kilobytes each. This may be important if you want to go ahead and enable shadowing in the BIOS. So I downloaded already all the files that I need, including the binary file that we will go ahead and burn on our EEPROM chip later. And I think I have to go into binary to show you these files. And here you see the two ROMOS files. One is ROMOS.bin. I think this one can be written directly onto an EEPROM chip, but the ROMOS PCI.bin requires configuration. The configuration utility is also already part of the software package that you can download from the project website. And it is under tools and it is called BROM CFG. So BROM CFG, and then it will tell you what you have to do. So you have to call BROM CFG and then the specific binary file. So let me just type this out quickly ROM OS PCI dot bin. This should be the correct command. So here you get some information about the ROM image. First of all, it says ROM signature is okay, blah, blah, blah. And then you see all kinds of settings. If you go ahead and you say change configuration, it will ask you, is it an ISA ROM or PCI ROM? So if you continue with ISA and you just type in I and you don't have to do anything in this case anymore. So you will just be able to take this ROM OSPCI.bin and flash it to your EEPROM chip. This is what I did. I just took this ROM OSPCI.bin and flashed it to one of my EEPROM chips using my programmer. And then I added it to my network card, the same network card that I already used one time before to run XTIDE. But XTIDE used a 16 kilobyte EEPROM. This one is a 64 kilobyte EEPROM. So we definitely need to reconfigure our network card. If you haven't seen my XTIDE series, there are three videos. In there, we are configuring one network card with jumpers and another one with a configuration utility, which we are going to use right now. So this is the RSET8019. So here we go. This is basically a small tool to configure some parameters on the network card. So let's continue. Let's see what we have here. So this was set up for the XTID BIOS, which only required a 16 kilobyte block, but now we have a 64 kilobyte block. So we definitely need to change that. Plus the documentation says that we have to start at D000. So we have to change that. So let's go to setup change that and uh, this network card supports 64 kilobyte roms this is important this is also mentioned in the documentation of rom os oh fatal error okay uh let's just get out of this and let's configure our config sys and remove emm386 completely we don't need this right now uh emm 
386. So this is gone. Let's restart. So the network configuration tool even checked if we have enough space in our memory available. Set up so we are still on C800. And we want to go to 64 kilobytes. Yes. And we can pick from C or D, but C00 is already taken. So the only way is to locate it at D. And we have 64 kilobytes and that's it. So I think the rest is all fine. You want to update? Yes. View configuration. Yes, so everything is configured now. Let's see what happens if we restart. Oh, press scroll lock to boot. Okay, I was too slow. So let's try this again. I pressed scroll lock. Oh, welcome to RomOS. Here you go. <laughs> so this one should technically work if you have absolutely no drive installed on your PC. So no drive A or no floppy disk inserted in drive A if you have one. We are mimicking drive B. I don't know. Let's see if we have access to drive C. Yes, we do. So this is still there because, well, we still have access. B is probably a RAM drive. So here we have a few tools that is also stated in the documentation that we have access to some tools. So we have shutdown. I have a calendar calculator. CMEM. Let's see what CMEM is. Okay, so it's probably just a memory dump. And we can go up and down. Is this the entire memory of our computer or what is this? Hmm. Let's see what's a D000. Uh, D000. Yeah, whatever that is, I cannot read. Can we change the display? No. So this is like if you want to quickly go into an operating system, then you just plug in your network card and then you have a DOS prompt. Do we have a version? So this is mini command. I'm not sure exactly what that is, if this is from FreeDOS or some modified version of the command.com file just to make it smaller. I think I have seen something on the project page, but yeah, this seems to work. What is CPU level? Let's see if it has a parameter. Okay, so it can tell us what CPU there is. So CPU ID, uh, it's a genuine Intel, it's a 486DX2. What else do we have? What is Cal? Oh, a calendar. Okay, so today is 24th of January and this is correct. <laughs> okay, what else we have? What is MM? Oh, file manager. I do want to boot without any drives attached. So let me go ahead and remove all drives or we can just disable them in the BIOS. I think this should help as well. I don't have to disconnect them. Uh, so let's first get rid of the entries here. So non and non. And I think in here we just leave it that way. Oh, we can enable shadowing here. So this is a 16 kilobyte blocks, I think. So let's just enable these four. Four times 16 should allow to move the ROM BIOS into the memory. Okay. And here we go. We have no hard drives, nothing. But we are booting into FreeDOS. So you see the kernel here, FreeDOS, blah, blah, blah. In a disk, no hard disks detected. But we get a very basic operating system. How cool is that?
Yeah, unfortunately, there is not much else we can do here now. The question is, if I have a small game that can run from a floppy disk, would I be able to run that game? Because I can boot, I have a command prompt. I should have some sort of access to memory, I guess. Well, let's see if we can maybe play a simple game that just runs from a floppy disk. Winter graphics mode setup. So is it like this? Oh, we can configure something. So yes, we play in VGA. Oh, what can we pick here? Oh, this also supports Roland MT32. Adlib Sound Blaster. Okay, so I guess we have the same boards here. Internal speaker, Adlib Sound Blaster. But we have Sound Blaster support. And... I just don't remember how all the other things work, so I don't want to bore you with too many details about this old game. Just one jump and that's it. Yeah, 70 meters. Fine. Fine with me. So yeah, this is ROM OS. What do you think about this little project? I don't know if it's useful for anything, but it is very limited, of course. You have no system utilities, you have no format, you have no scan disk. There are so many limitations. And then if you want to run software, you need a drive anyway. So if it's a floppy drive, then you can just boot from a bootable floppy disk. So yeah, you can let me know in the comments if you think there is a use case for this type of OS, which comes on a 64 kilobyte EEPROM. So yeah, and this is all I have for you in this little video today. Let me know your thoughts about ROM OS in the comments. And that should be it for today. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in one of my future videos. Take care and bye bye.